Hi, uh, today I wanted to discuss um, connecting your QNAP directly to your computer. Um, so no switches, no DHCP servers or routers handling the IP addresses or anything like that. Um, just what happens if you were to do a direct cable connection um, between your computer and your QNAP NAS, almost using it like a, a, a direct attached storage, a bit like a USB hard drive if you like. It's definitely not that simple as a USB drive where you plug it and it just works. Um, but almost. Um, so here I've got the uh, QNAP QFinder Pro tool. This is available for multiple platforms, um, so the popular ones, Mac OS and Windows especially. Um, so this software will open up and it will do a broadcast scan of your network and it will find any QNAPs that you have. Um, so to sort of paint the picture of what I've got set up here on uh, my setup, um, I've got a TS-464 um, wired directly to my laptop. Um, currently I do have the Wi-Fi disabled on this laptop just so I'm not finding other QNAPs on my network as well. So I just wanted to show you what would happen in a sort of one-to-one -one situation. Um, if you still wanted things like internet to work on your laptop, stuff like that, then obviously still have your Wi-Fi connected. Um, but here what we found is with the direct cable connection, we found the QNAP with a fairly strange IP address 169.254.10.106. Um, so in my case, it's connected at 2.5G because I do have a 2.5G um, adapter in my laptop here. Um, so it's negotiated at the, uh, the full speed capable. Now, if I bring in my network configuration, um, so this is obviously a Mac, it would look very similar on a, on a Windows machine. Uh, we can see that the USB adapter that I've got connected to my Mac here says it's a self-assigned IP address. Now, the important thing here is to look that what's automatically happened is the QNAP has picked something with 169.254 at the start and so has the Mac. So this is just something that happens with pretty much any device out there in the world. If they cannot find a DHCP server, they will automatically pick um, an IP address um, in the range of 169.254.something.something. Now, when we look at the subnet mask here, we see that it's uh, 255.255.0.0. Anybody familiar with IP addresses or free routers from your ISP would know that they're normally three sets of 255 and uh, then one zero. But in this case, what this is telling us with the subnet is so long as the first um, 169 and the 254 match, the other two numbers can be anything. So long as they're not the exact same as each other, which would be, you know, there's quite a few choices of combinations there but so long as um, the Mac doesn't randomly pick the same thing that the QNAP randomly picked um, everything's going to work straight out the box so we're already in a compatible network area because we both have 169.254 at the start so really with absolutely nothing else um, uh, done to this uh, this would work so if I was to uh, open up a web browser and I'm going to type in the IP address I see there so 169.254.10.106 so I'm going to type that into uh, my web browser here. So if I do uh, 169.254.10.106, and I know this QNAP is running on port 8080, so I'm going to just type 8080. Um, I found the QNAP already. So again, if I bring that in, um, we can see that it matches. So 169.254.10.106 is exactly the same as what this QNAP is. Um, so now I'm connected to the QNAP. I can log into it. So I can log in with my uh, Craig username. Uh, type in with my password and I'm in there. Now some things that you're going to see, a uh, couple of warnings and errors, so we saw one pop up, we'll go look at that later, but the first one you'll see is that um, the system has detected the DNS is not working, it can't resolve any hosts and that some things won't work, which is correct. Um, now you can stop this message from appearing by saying don't ask me this again, just stop asking, I know the situation. But in this scenario, the QNAP, the only thing it's connected to is my laptop. So of course it's not got any DNS information or internet, you know, it can't resolve internet hosts, things like that. Um, if we go and look at the error that popped up, it's saying it's failed to synchronize with the time server, obviously, because it cannot access the internet. Um, and it's unable to obtain any updates for apps. Um, again, correct, because the QNAP is not online in this scenario. Um, so with this setup, if I was to click into the App Center, it'll show me the apps I have installed, um, but I can't go and browse any other apps. Um, so, you know, if I go to the All Apps, it says um, it's unavailable. Um, please try again later. Simply, the QNAP is not online, um, so it cannot get um, any updates. Um, but this doesn't mean you can't use it. 
So if I was to bring back in uh, QNAP QFinder again, for example, um, I can go highlight this NAS and say I want a network drive attached. Um, so I can log in with my username that I've got and my password. Let's do that now. <clears throat> and then it's going to allow me to mount the storage. So here it's found the QNAP. It's only got one IP address option because there's only one cable connected. Um, it's saying what protocol do I want? I'm fine with the, the default SMB SIFs there. So I'm going to say OK. It's going to say, am I OK to let QFinder Pro make some system setting changes? I'm fine with that. So I'll just say yes to that and let it do that with my laptop. Um, so you're attempting to connect to the server. That's fine. Connect. Um, I can pick the media folder. So I'll click that one. And it's going to ask access network fo uh, folders. Um, so now I've got access to the QNAP. So for anybody familiar with the previous video we did of setting up Plex, this is how I had it set up there. So if I go into movies, there's the movies. Um, so this is now working and down here in the location section, I've got the, the QNAP mounted via the IP address. Um, so it's really that simple. It's now fully accessible. I can access it. So although it's a network attached storage and I am technically using a network connection to connect to it through the, through the network cabling. Um, I'm not actually going through a main switch or anything like that. Um, the only negatives to this is the QNAP's not obviously accessible to multiple people at the same time. And some things that rely on the internet uh, won't work, such as uh, populating the app center if you wanted to add more apps or keeping the time in sync, things like that. Um, but it does work absolutely perfectly. You can copy files to and from the device, absolutely no problem. Um, so if I wanted to copy down a, a, a file to my laptop, for example, so this Top Gun, um, let's pick a bigger one, say the uh, Doctor Strange one there, and I'm just going to drag it to my desktop. Um, so that's going to copy and it, it went so fast it didn't even appear there on the screen. So the file's on my desktop now. So it, it's just really easy to um, access your QNAP in this way. So if you ever did and I'll take your QNAP with you to a meeting room, let's say, and you didn't have an Ethernet port to link it into to get it online. Um, you can still use it, absolutely no problem. Everybody can connect directly. Uh, there is no need to have things like DHCP servers enabled. Um, if you even wanted to, you could go a step further. Um, and on your local computer, if you wanted to, you could go and set some static IP addresses. So you could configure a static address so you can go into advanced on the Mac and change from using DHCP, go down to manually and you can type in um, a specific address, something more familiar like 192.168 if you wanted to. Um, and at the same time, you could also set the QNAP up the same way. So if you wanted to come into the QNAP and go to the network and virtual switch option, um, you could set a, a specific IP address on this one if you wanted to as well. So you could come in here um, and configure your main adapter and, and set it to a static IP address so that it's not guessing different addresses each time. Um, you know, any network mappings that you have set up would then be uh, would work straight away without even having to uh, mount the network volume. Uh, but this is how you would connect um, from um, uh, from your computer to a QNAP. Um, no switches, no anything involved. Um, you don't need a specific thing like a, in the olden days, I guess we used to call them crossover cables. Um, I'm just using a bog standard um, Ethernet cable here connected through. Um, if you're using a straight cable, uh, the QNAP will just switch to be compatible. So it'll do it'll cross itself so that even if there's no switch involved, it'll still work absolutely fine. Uh, but as you can see, they're connected at a nice 2.5 gigabits a second direct connection, very fast connection um, from uh, my computer here um, uh, across to the QNAP itself. Um, so if anybody has any questions on this, do let me know. Um, it is a question we do get asked several times. Somebody might want uh, a NAS but doesn't have the network set up for it just yet. They just want to use it directly. Yes, it's absolutely possible. You can definitely do that. Okay, um, thanks a lot for watching. Again, any questions, let me know. Thank you. Bye.